Welcome to the Geek on Life. Your passions, your stories, your life. Simplified with just one app. This is the future. The Geek on Life in just one app. Experience more giga moments when you make the smart choice. With the Philippines' fastest mobile data network. How do I know it's T1? Simply smart uncle. Isang uh, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat mga kapatid. Uh, nagbabalik po ang inyong paboritong kasama tuwing Sabado ng umaga. Ito po ang Power and Play. Hatid sa inyo ng Big Boss Cement, Big Boss at Atag, Big Boss at Tibay at ng Cherry Loom, ang Yerong May Aluminum. Ako po si Noli Iyala at ito po ay Championship Weekend. Naku, excited na ba kayo? Dahil uh, puro mga ikangalaban laban na mga kampyon. Ngayong linggong ito, bukas po ay uh, ang laban na ng ating uh, pambansang kamao, ang ating pong pinagmamalaking si Senador Manny Pacquiao, and of course lumalaban din ang ating pinagmamalaki naman sa larangan ng golf, si Yuka Sasso para sa huling major ng golf, yung pong AIG Women's Open sa Carnoustie, Scotland. Kaya naman, itong araw pong ding ito, ay araw ng mga kampyon sa power and play. Mamaya po, ihahatid namin ang uh, kakakampyon lamang na assistant coach ng Sacramento Kings doon po sa NBA Summer League, si Coach Jimmy Alapag. And of course, ang uh, nagkampyon din, nag-gold medal sa katatapos namang PVL Open Conference, ang Cherry Tigo Crossovers kasama si Dindin Santiago, si Jaja Santiago, Shaya Adorador, at si Jasmine Nabor. Mamaya din po ay eh, aming hihimayin yung laban ni Senador Manny Pacquiao at makakasama din natin ang kampyon naman ng buhay, ang ating Paralympian na lalaban sa Tokyo Paralympics, si Gerald Mangliwan. Kaya, ay eh, papano? Tutok lamang mga kapatid ha, dito po sa Power and Play. MECQ naman tayo eh, kaya medyo wala tayong pupuntahan. Maganda-magandang umaga sa lahat ng mga nakikinig sa atin sa buong mundo sa pamamagitan ng Radio 5 92.3 News FM. Yan po sa atin sa 1PH, sa Signal TV, and of course sa lahat po na nakatutok sa Facebook Live ng 1PH, ng Radio 5 at ng The Power and Play with Com Noli Iyala. E di pano, simulan na natin po mga kapatid ha sa pamamagitan ng ating uh, sports weekly highlights. Miyerkules, tinambahan at tinalo ng Sacramento Kings ang Boston Celtics 167 para makuha ang 2021 NBA Summer League title sa Las Vegas. Unbeaten sa buong run ang Kings na unang team sa liga na may multiple Summer League titles. Ang isa sa mga assistant coach ng championship squad Walang iba kung hindi ang ating pinagmamalaking si Jimmy Alapag. Mamaya po, makaka-one-on-one natin si Mighty Mouse. Abangan niyo po yan. Webes naman, kinumpirma ng Philippine National Volleyball Federation ang pagbibitiw ni Anusurin Tai Bandit bilang assistant coach ng Philippine Women's Volleyball Team. Tinanggap ng federation ang pagbibitiw ng multi-titled mentor pero may pahaging din sila sa kanya. Imbis daw kasi na mag-report agad sa PNVF, nakinabang pa si Bandit sa kanyang visa para makapag-coach sa Premier Volleyball League. Kasalukuyang naghahanap ng replacement coach ang PNVF. Webes din, natanggap na ni Heidelin Diaz ang pinangakong uh, house and lot sa Tagaytay. Pinangunahan ni Philippine Olympic Committee President Representative Bambol Tolentino ang turnover ceremony. Nagkakahalaga ng 5 milyon piso ang 220 square meter property. Pagkatapos ni Diaz, nag-groundbreak naman para sa magiging bahay ng iba pang mga Olympic medalists sa Tagaytay. Biyernes din, inanunsyo ng Philippine Skating Union 
ang pag-atras ni Michael Christian Martinez sa Olympic qualifying event. Nagdesisyon daw ang Pinoy Olympian at kanyang coach na mag-focus muna sa pagpapagaling lalot on and off ang kanyang injuries. Itutuon na lang din daw ni Martinez ang kanyang atensyon sa iba pang mga international tournaments. At biyernes din, inanunsyo na ng PBA na may verbal agreement na sa Pampanga LGU para ituloy ang mga laro sa kasalukuyang Philippine Cup sa probinsya. Hinihintay na lang ang official permit mula kay Pampanga Governor Dennis Pineda para masimulan ang RT-PCR testing ng mga kupanan. Oras na maklear sa swab test, diretsyong Pampanga na ang PBA teams. Bibigyan sila ng isang linggo insayo bago buksan muli ang mga laro. At yan po ang ating mga sports weekly highlights. And of course, ang ating tinututukan ngayong linggong ito ay ang laban ni Manny Pacquiao kay Jordanis Ugas. Bukas na po yan. Ha? Abangan niyo po yan ha? dito sa Signal TV, sa TV5. E eh, talaga pong ating uh, tututukan at uh, siyempre susuportahan ng ating pambansang kamao, si Senador Manny Pacquiao. Sabi niya, it might be his last fight. Ha? Uh, abangan po natin yan. Alright, and of course, uh, ang sabi ko nga kanina, maliban kay Senador Manny Pacquiao, Yuka Sasso po, ha? lumalaban, siya po ay only two shots behind sa leaders going into the third round. Ha? Ang kanya pong score sa kasalukuyan ay five under par. At siya po ay lumalaban uh, behind lamang kay Georgia Hall at kay uh, Mina Harigae. Ha? Kaya po uh, medyo uh, supportahan din po natin. Medyo maaga naman ang laban ni uh, Yuka. Kung kayo po ay nanonood sa Signal uh, TV, eh doon po kayo manood sa ating uh, cable channel. May coverage po ang uh, laban ni Yuka Sasso. Alright, pinag-uusapan natin ang laban ni Senador Manny Pacquiao. Yan din po ang ating pupulsuhan ngayong araw na ito. Ha? Ang ating pong itatanong, eh simpleng-simple lang mga kapatid, simpleng-simple lang. Ang tanong po, mana-knockout kaya ni uh, Pacman ang kanyang kalaban na si Ugas? Ha? At sa anong round? Kung, inyo po, kung kayo po'y naniniwalang mana-knockout yan ni Senador Manny, ano pong round yan? Mag-text lamang sa aming hotline 0908 0629. Ulitin ko po yan. Ha? 0908-208-0629. O di kaya mag-comment. Maglagay ng inyong post sa aming mga Facebook pages sa Power and Play, sa Radio 5, at sa 1PH. Alright, mga kapatid. Tuloy-tuloy po tayo. And of course, sisimulan na natin ang ating mga bisita sa pamamagitan ng ating Fast Take kung saan ang opinion po ng inyong mga paboritong sports journals ang mahalaga. At ngayong araw pong ito, mga balik fast takers muli, ang ating mga kasama, mga kasama, walang iba kung di mula sa spin.ph, si Randolph Leongson, at mula sa inquire.net naman, uh, si Bong Losada. Magandang magandang ang umaga, Dolph and uh, Bong. Magandang umaga po po. Good to see you early in the morning, uh, Dolph at saka Bong. Uh, Bibilisan ko ito dahil marami tayong gustong pag-usapan ngayong araw na ito. Pero bago tayo magpunta sa fast take, fearless prediction kay Manny Pacquiao. Ikaw muna, Rando. Yung animal prediction ko, hindi ko hindi mananakout eh. Pero masyado ng baga strategic si, si Senator Manny na uh, he's not really going to hunt for that knockout. But he'll be happy to get that unanimous prediction. Alright. Bong, ikaw. Uh, agree ka ba? Bong? Mukhang hindi tayo naririnig. Mukhang hindi tayo naririnig ni Bong. Bong! Naririnig ka namin. Alright, tingnan natin kung uh, maibabalik natin. Of course, alam natin na uh, Dolph na napakahalaga nitong laban na to. Sabi nga nila, it might be his last fight. Win or lose. Dahil uh, marami pang pinaplano si Senador Manny. Ikaw tatanungin ko, sa tingin mo ba ito ang huling fight na ni Senador Manny? Uh... Uh, there's a, a, a great likelihood, but feeling ko ko, uh, if if uh, Senator Manny doesn't win the presidency in 2022, which parang all signs point to him running, eh, uh, I think if he doesn't win sa, sa May, this would really be like his, his final fight. But uh, ako honestly, <laughs> feeling ko meron pang isa. 
maybe a match against so, uh, Terence uh, Crawford or Errol Spence. I think so sa tingin mo kung mananalo si, si Senator Manny, lalaban pa siya bilang presidente? <laughs> kung mananalo, pili ko huli na eh. But, uh, uh, akala ko honestly, kung mananalo, I, I lalaban pa ng bilang presidente, pampili na yun, no? sa kasaysayan ng sports. Tsaka bawal po yata ako, me. I think bawal, nasa lunasin no? na bawal tamaan na kahit na sila yung, yung presidente natin. Tama, bawal yun. Dahil uh, siyempre, pinoprotektahan ang magiging Pangulo. Pero sana nga, eh, kahit anong mangyari, eh, nasa mabuting desisyon yung uh, ibibigay ni Senator Manny. Alright, medyo mamaya, tignan natin kung mayahabol natin si Bong dahil lang problema siya. But let's go to our fast take dahil tayo ay uh, may mga pag-uusapan mamaya pa ng mga ibang mga sa mga bisita. Kaya ikaw na muna, Randolph, ang ating unahin. Ang una nating fast take issue ay tungkol sa PBA. Alam naman natin na nalalapit na ang uh, ang paglalaro o pagbabalik ng PBA diyan po sa probinsya ng Pampanga. Pero bago 'yan, may mga nagbungkahi among the players na dapat daw ay uh, mga players na lang ang mag-ambag-ambag doon sa kanilang kakainin, sa kanilang hotel room at iba pang gastos para daw makatulong sa pagbabalik ng PBA. Ang tanong, anong masasabi mo dito sa mungkahing ito? Makakabuti ba ito o mas makakasama para sa liga at tatanggapin, dapat bang tanggapin ng PBA ang alok ng mga players? You have one minute, uh, Randolph. Go! Kung ako naniniwala ako na ang, ang tagumpay ng PBA magsisimula doon sa baga, pagkatutulungan, yung kooperasyon, ang lahat ng uh, parte ng liga, hindi lang po yung ating uh, uh, stakeholders, kung may team owners and your organizers, but even uh, the players. I, I come from the idea na uh, kung baga, it's this player's way of giving back na lang din, especially after yung top 2020 natin na uh, there were months kung saan sumusweldo sila, pinapasweldo sila, pero wala naman tayong liga. So kung baga, I, I don't think na gano'n naman kalaki yung pagsichipin-chipin -chip nila. And I think Uh, it's it's their way na lang din kasi last time na nag tayo ng bubble, umabot yata ng 70 million yung gastos ng PBA and kung gusto talaga ng players eh makapagbalik tayo eh ito talaga yung way para maituloy natin yung liga at makapagbigay ng inspirasyon at kasiyahan man lang doon sa ating publiko, lalo na hindi pa tapos yung ating uh, pandemya Well said, well said uh, Dolph, as usual Well, uh, uh, ako, uh, basically, yung aking take dyan. Wow, buti na. Bong, naririnig mo na kami? Opo ako. Bong? Ayan! Opo. <laughs> Pumasok din. Okay. Uh, balikan ko yung ating unang uh, issue. Kaya medyo, ano tayo? Ang ating unang issue ay yung pag-aalok ng mga PBA players na uh, magbayad ng ibang gastusin para lamang makabalik ang PBA. Ito ba ay makakabuti sa PBA at dapat bang tanggapin ito ng liga? You have one minute, Bong. Go! Um, sa akin, Gom, okay lang naman yun na tanggapin, nil, tanggapin ng PBA office yung alok ng players na mag-chip in sa gastos sa gastusin na para matuloy uli yung Philippine Cup. Kasi yun nga po, sabi na rin po ni Randolph na parang ito na rin yung parang um, giving back ng players. Parang nagbabalik balik tanaw. Hindi ko alam yung sa Tagalog. Basta parang tumatanaw lang po sila ng utang na loob. Kasi yun nga, Noong 2020, masyadong mahaba yung time na wala pong laro. Then sumasahod rin sila. So, parang it's just right for them na to give back to, not only to the viewing public, but also to the PBA who who gave them so much during during the early stages of the pandemic. Because, um, like Randolph said na rin, um, ito na rin yung ano nila eh, parang opportunity na rin nila to help the league to go, to get back up. In spiel po ko. All right. Well, ako simple lang ang take ko yan. I, I think I I I uh, agree with you. Pero ang simple lang ang take ko. Eh, ito ay magandang gesture, but at the same time, ang PBA ay professional league, and I think kaya ng kaya ng PBA yan. I don't think uh, kalangan, but it's a very good gesture among the players, and even as a, a uh, PR uh, PR uh, strategy, napaganda yan uh, para sa imahe ng mga players. But I hope the PBA uh, understands na. Kayang-kaya ng mga teams yan. Alam mo, wala akong duda dyan. And I think, uh, yun ang nga ang gagawin nila. I think they can continue with the, with the league na sa pamamagitan ng pagbubuno ng mga, o pagkocontribute ng mga teams sa pagbabalik ng PBA. Alright. Mula sa PBA, lipat tayo sa volleyball. Yan ang ating second issue of the day. Sa volleyball naman, 
Well, nagbuo na daw ng bagong training pool. Pero may isang pangalan na wala doon. Si Aliza Valdez ay hindi naisama sa training pool. Na itong bagong training pool ng national team. So ang tanong, ano kaya ang posibleng dahilan dito? At sa tingin nyo ba ay uh, malaking pagkakamali kung si Aliza ay hindi isasama sa training pool? I'll begin with you, Bong. One minute. Go! Um, kom, yung dahilan po, wala po ako nakikitang concrete na dahilan bakit hindi sinama si Aliza sa, sa national team pool. Uh, maybe may, may some may issues um, backstage. Um, but I think on sa on the standpoint of being on the players on the team, um, I think it's detrimental because Aliza is still one of the top two players in the Philippines. Parang 1A, 1B sila ni Jaja. So, malaking dagok na wala si Aliza sa national team. Um, she's still probably the number one open hitter sa volleyball sa Pilipinas. Um, it will be difficult, but we still have MJ Phillips sa pool. Um, athletically, power-wise, strength-wise, MJ Phillips is at par with Eliza. Maybe even better. But having that depth at open spiker, the most crucial scorer in the in the volleyball sport is very crucial nga po talaga. So Eliza is very much needed pa rin. Absolutely. Uh, I agree with you that she is still one of the best in the Philippines. Same issue uh, para sa'yo, Dolph. Dapat ba, o pag mali ba itong hindi naisama si Aliza sa national training pool? You have one minute. Go! Kom, oh, I've always believed dun sa idea na when it comes to team formation, uh, more than the best players, what we need is the best team. The best players na aakma doon sa sistema. Now, being 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 nasabi na nga natin yun, uh, we have to understand na yung Philippine volleyball natin is in a period of transition. And, uh, evident naman, I think Bong uh, and other volleyball fans could relate na yung politika, kumbaga, as much as uh, unti-unting na ayos na ng PNBF, eh, evident pa rin. Meron pa rin mga paksyon-paksyon dyan. And I think that kind of affected dun sa tryout process. Uh, maganda sana kung lahat ay eh, mabibigyan ng oportunidad, hindi lang si Aliza, hindi lahat ng uh, best players in the land natin. Especially since we've mentioned na yung national team natin is in a period of transition. Uh, although, yun nga lang talaga, uh, I think all they need is a fair chance, especially, alam natin yung, yung kagalingan, ito isang alay sa balde. Exacto. I agree with the, you also, Dolph, na ang uh, national pool is about the best players with the best fit. At kung ito isang programa, eh dapat uh, tayo ay nagbibuild. Hindi naman ito pick-up system na naman. So, well, again, I still believe Eliza is one of the best in the country and she deserves to be at least in the training pool. Hindi pa naman to national team eh. Training pool pa lang. Bakit wala ang pangalan ni Eliza Valdez? Alright, let's go to our third and final take of the morning. Alam nyo, marami nag kumakatok sa NBA pero mga players. Pero meron din larangan ng NBA na pwedeng pumasok ang mga Pinoy. At ito ang coaching. At right now, ang malakas ang katok ay si Jimmy Alapag na ngayon ay nagkampyon kasama ng Sacramento Kings sa NBA Summer League. So ang tanong, maliban kay Coach Tab Baldwin na alam naman natin is very very qualified to coach in the NBA at maybe kay Jimmy Alapag na ngayon ay nag apply na sa Sacramento Kings. Sino pa kaya sa ating mga coaches ang may magandang resume at pwedeng makipagsabayan abroad? I'll begin with you, Dolph. One minute, go! Kom, nung, nung ibinigay yung tanong sa akin, uh, dalawa yung naisip kong pangalan. Uh, isa is pa consider na natin Filipino na rin, kahit na sa dugo. Eh, hindi. Ang isa dyan, si Coach Alex Ponto na nasa States. He was a part of uh, the Gilas sa uh, Pilipinas coaching staff before nga nagkaroon po ng pandemia. And then I think Coach Alex is now in the United States. Uh, Alam, nakita natin yung resume ni Coach Alex with, with his time in Alaska kahit hindi siya nag-campion. And alam natin na he's very capable of uh, being in the same grade kung susubok man siya doon. Yung pangalawa sa akin, tinitingnan ko sa local seats, there's only one guy who really impresses me. Not just because magaling siya sa fundamentals, but he, he has proven his, his capabilities. Coach Chito Victorero, Coach Tabadun has already mentioned that Coach Chito yung local coach 
na nakaka-impress talaga sa kanya. And kita naman po natin yun kung paano niya pinapatakbo yung Magnolia sa TV. So I think with enough opportunity, hindi malayo kung susubuhan ni Magnolia. Ang ganda naman nun. Ang ganda naman nung sinabi mo. I'm sure Coach Chito Victorero is very, very proud. And ano, ako, I'm very proud of Coach Chito because uh, isa sa mga talagang nakita natin yan. Alright. Bong, same issue. Maliban kay Coach Jimmy at kay Coach Tab, sino pa kaya ang mga coaches na lokal na pwedeng makipagsabayan at may magandang resume para makapasok ng NBA? One minute, Bong. Go! Um, um, unlike kay Dolph, na nagsabi ng two names, um, on the top of my head, isa lang po pumasok talaga na name sa akin, eh, si Coach Tim Cohn. Um, by credentials, hindi ko na kailangan mag-getin yun. Super daming championship. Kung... Kung PBA team si Coach Tim, siya ang number two most successful team sa PBA behind San Miguel. Um, international recognition ni Coach Tim, kilala na po siya ng ibang coaches sa NBA, like Coach Eric Spolstra, kilala na siya. And yung author ng, ng biography ni Michael Jordan is Roland Lazenby. Kilala siya. And he actually recommended one time that Coach Tim could actually be in the NBA because of the mastery of the triangle offense. Yun lang po, si Coach Tim po talaga yung pumasok sa isip ko. Um, sorry po sa local coaches, sa Filipino coaches. But Coach Tim, hands down, is far, way, far ahead of everyone here in the, here in the Philippines. Well, undoubtedly, the winningest coach in the PBA and uh, perhaps the most decorated one, si Coach Tim Cohn. Definitely talagang uh, very qualified yan. Uh, and of course, when we talk about the NBA, eh, hindi naman basta-basta ang pwedeng pumasok dyan. But again, ako, ah, more than anything, meron kanya-kanyang ano yan eh, may mga kanya-kanyang niche sa mundo. Ang ating mga Philippine coaches are good enough to coach everywhere. But I think they, the Philippines deserves also the, the best coaches in our country to handle our basketball. Dahil tayo ay basketball crazy nation. Maraming salamat uh, Dolph and Bong sa oras na binigyan niyo sa amin ngayong umagang ito. Mabuhay kayo and we'll see you in the PBA very soon. Maraming salamat Dolph. Thank you po. Um, maraming maraming salamat. Kaibigan natin kaibigan na sa hanap buhay si Randolph Leongson ng Spin.ph and Bong Lozada ng uh, Inquirer.net. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pagsama ngayong umagang ito. Alright, bago tayo magpatuloy mga kaibigan uh, balikan muna natin ang ilang mga kasaysayan sa sports history sa ating This Week in Sports History. August 19, 1995 o 26 years ago, pantagal na pala nito ha, bumalik sa ring si boxing heavyweight, le uh, heavyweight legend Mike Tyson matapos ang tatlong taong pagkakakulong dahil sa kasong rape. Tagumpay ang comeback fight ni Iron Mike kontra kay Peter McNeely na agad niyang na-knockdown sa unang sampung segundo ng opening round. Hindi <laughs> tumagal, ano? Nakatayo pa si McNeely pero napatum napatumba uli siya ni Tyson sa loob lang ng dalawampung segundo. Dito na pumasok ang corner ni McNeely at ipinatigil ang laban. Panalo via disqualification si Tyson at malaking financial success din ang laban na kumita ng 96 million dollars worldwide. Mike Tyson returns to the ring in spectacular fashion after three years in prison this week in sports history. I remember that fight. Nakutambihirai. Whenever Mike Tyson would fight before, everybody would uh, would watch. And of course, gayon ganon na rin si Manny Pacquiao. And bukas po abangan yun le Manny Pacquiao ang laban laban kay Jordanis Ugas. All right, bago po tayo magbreak. Isang paalala po mula sa SMART, ang ating uh, tagapagpalakas uh, dito sa Power and Play. Puso Pilipinas is a movement to celebrate the Filipino athlete powered by SMART. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Get a chance to win exclusive Puso Pilipinas merch by sharing their Facebook page in your social media accounts with hashtag Puso Pilipinas. The Giga Life app is the latest mobile app from Smart that lets you discover and enjoy your passions with the different Giga promos. It can be downloaded and used by Smart Postpaid, Smart Prepaid, Bro Prepaid, and TNT subscribers via the Apple or Google Play Store. What can the Giga Life app do for me? Check your balance, monitor your current subscription, top up using debit credit card, subscribe to the latest Giga promos, monitor your data consumption. 
Auto detect your mobile number when you are connected to Smart Network. One tap subscription to the most popular offer, Giga Video 99. And Power and Play is powered by Smart. All right, mga kapatid, uh, tuloy -tuloy po tayo. We will take a quick break. Sa aming pagbabalik, makakusap natin ang ating Paralympian, si Gerald Mangliwan. Dito po sa Power and Play, hatid sa inyo ng Big Boss Cement at ng Cherry Loom. Your passions, your stories, your life. Simplified with just one app. This is the future. The Giga Life in just one app. Experience more Giga moments when you make the smart choice. With the Philippines' fastest mobile data network. How do I know it's D1? Simply Smart Apple. Muli sa ating mga kapatid dyan sa San Pablo City. Isa nga palang uh, pagbati ha, para kay Joy Talento mula sa kanyang asawa, si Junar. 
Happy, happy birthday daw, Joy. 43 years old ka na ba? Bay, magpa-blow out ka naman. <laughs> happy birthday, Joy. Mula sa ating kasama, si Junar. Uh, Magandang-magandang umaga sa inyo dyan sa San Pablo. All right. At this point, mga kapatid, uh, mga kasama na natin ngayon, ang isa sa mga kinatawan po natin sa parating na Tokyo Paralympics. Uh, yan po ay yung uh, Olympics ng mga... Uh, differently abled ah, or mga disabled athletes po natin. Uy, medyo nawala yata daw sa, sa ating uh, connection. Tingnan natin kung may babalik natin ang ating Paralympian at magiging flag bearer na si Gerald Mangliwan. Siya po ang ating flag bearer dyan sa Tokyo na magsisimula na sa Tuesday, ah, August 24 po, ang opening ng Tokyo Paralympics. And of course, tayo ay uh, nasa high pa rin ng Olympics eh. Dahil, uh, ika nga, eh, nanalo tayo dun sa uh, abled athletes. So, tingnan natin kung nandiyan na ngayon si Gerald, uh, uh, ang ating uh, para... Alright, mukhang hindi natin makuha pa si Ger Gerald Mangliwan. So, puntahan muna natin ha. Oh, sige, ito, mas, uh, meron din itong... Uh, ito yung ating pinag-uusapan kanina. Puntahan muna natin po ang parating na nalaban ni Senador Manny Pacquiao. Bukas na po yan, ah. Uh, at mga alas 11 ng umaga dito po sa Maynila, ang laban ni Senador Manny Pacquiao, laban kay Jordanis Ugas, para sa WBA Welterweight Championship of the World. At ngayon pong araw na ito tayo mapalad na mga kasama natin, live from Las Vegas, Nevada, ang ating kaibigan at boxing analyst, Homer Saison, at ang isa pang Kinikilala pagdating sa boxing, walang iba kundi si Attorney Ed Tolentino. Maganda maganda umaga, Homer and Ed. Morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Attorney. It's a long day here, so I look a little ragged. I always do. <laughs> no, ay, ayos lang yan. Al alam mo, walang, walang ragged-ragged pagka, ano, pagka nasa laban. Di ba, Attorney Ed? Kamusta ka, Attorney Ed? Mukhang walang volume. Wala kang volume, Attorney Ed. Yeah, Kung I can hear, yung... Attorney. Oh, tingnan natin. Balikan natin. Attorney Ed? Balikan natin si Attorney Ed, ha? Mukhang uh, nag... Anyway, simulan ko muna sa iyo, Homer. I know you are in Las Vegas. Uh, ano ba ang situation there dyan? How is the media hype? Uh, and of course, the bus Compared to the other fights of uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao. Is there much interest for this fight, Homer? But w that's what the media is trying to do. But the, the God honest truth, Commissioner, is that it's like the bus without Boy Abonda. It's just different. Because um, <laughs> it's... Uh, Errol Spence is a blockbuster fight. As a matter of fact, uh, Pac uh, Senator Manny was a prohibitive underdog. Um, plus 180 siya. Ngayon, bigla siyang na minus 375 favorite. So it just shows you the polar difference between fighting an undefeated young lion, uh, Errol Spence against Ugas. So medyo na tapered up. Even the media center, marami ding mga media commissioner, but not all, not the big names are here. Like for instance, hindi ko nakita si Stephen A. Smith. He would have been here if the, it was Spence and Ugas. Uh, Skip uh -oh. Bayless would uh -oh. probably be here too. Uh, there's, uh -oh. still a, there's still a lot of media that here... A lot, the media contingent of the Philippines, everybody is represented here. Rappler, ABS-CBN, lahat ng Philippine Star, Manila Bulletin, Philippine Daily Inquirer. But that's because we are, uh, ano, we're representing Manny, uh, we are covering Senator Manny Pacquiao. But um, yung iba mga outlet, they do not have the same interest for uh, you, you So what about, what about the fans? How is the ticket sales? Anong, anong uh, sitwasyon dyan? Do you, do you expect, ayan si Attorney Ed, do you expect Homer yeah. na puno ang ating uh, venue? Yeah, I did call T-Mobile box office commissioner and they told me that they expect a full house crowd, amazingly. And uh, uh, maybe because the pricing had changed, you know, when it was, for instance, when it was Errol Spence, na interview ko yung isang ticket uh, broker sa T-Mobile Arena, the most expensive seat were $2,500 for the Spence fight. Ngayon, nagiging $1,500 na lang. Uh, if it were Spence and uh, Senator Pacquiao, the tickets, the least, ang pinakamura was $500. And uh, you are two steps away from heaven. Nasa ano na yun, malayo na. Ngayon, <laughs> you can procure tickets like for $200 something. All right. So it's just yours. Kasi of course, of course, Commissioner, it's like I said, it's not the same 
it's not the same uh, walang cache na iba ang cache but uh, we're still excited to cover it of course because uh, Senator Pacquiao is here and uh, you have yes, covered yes. Uh, Senator Manny for a very long time pagdating sa mga laban niya uh, and of course ngayon may sinasabi niya maybe one of his last fights if not his last fight aside from his better english attorney ed <laughs> what has changed with Manny pre-fight wag muna natin pag-usapan yung fight mismo but the pre-fight yung kanya paghahanda and of course itong mga hype before the fight well, wag natin kalimutan ano na Manny Pacquiao was supposed to fight Errol Spence. So yung degree na preparation niya for this fight, eh talagang Herculean kasi inakala niya na si Errol Spence ang kanya makakaharap. At nakita naman natin niya no, yung kanya mga training videos, uh, the way he talked about the training camp, ang ganda. In fact, sinabi niya ngayon na this is the best training camp I've had mula nung laban niya kay Marco Antonio Barrera. That's because he was preparing for Errol Spence. Ah, ngayon, biglang nagkaroon ng downgrade, napunta kay Yor Dennis Ugas, so tingin nga ng marami, eh, baka sobra-sobra pa ang naiimpok na training ni Manny Pacquiao ngayon because of the sudden downgrade. But he looks, ano, he looks motivated. Ano? Ah, marami siyang gustong patunayan pa rin, believe it or not, sabi nga niya, ah, meron pa rin siyang gustong patunayan at his age, considering his accomplishments, gusto pa rin niyang uh, maramdaman how it is to be a world champion. Ang pakiramdam niya, he was cheated of the belt. Sapagkat uh, dapat siyang depending champion sa labang ito eh. Sapagkat yung titulo ni Ugas, yan ang dating hawak niya. Dati niyang nakuha kay uh, Kit Turman at uh, tinanggalamang sa kanya, allegedly because of inactivity. So, iyan ang mga gusto ni Manny Pacquiao. Titles are won in the ring, sabi niya. So, iyan ang gusto niya patunayan kay Yor Dennis Ugas. Hindi pwedeng i-email na lang sa'yo ang titulo. So, Attorney Ed, do you think that despite the downgrade, motivated talaga si Manny, hindi ito media hype lamang and uh, there is legit uh, uh, motivation as well as John, I got paused. What happened? What happened? Uh, uh, Nag-paused si Commissioner. Yeah, nag -post. I'm here. Okay, yeah, I'm here. Did you get the yes, yes, yes. Medyo nawala lang. Ed, oh. Ed? Yeah, uh, I got it. Ayan, ayan, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, ang tanong ko lang, do you think that this is legit na motivation for Senator Manny? He's not taking Ugas lightly here? Ako, tingin ko naman hindi. Ano? Although, alam mo, Commissioner, natural human reaction yan eh, hindi ba? So, kahit pa paano may konting, medyo na, na-disappoint din si Manny sa pag-atras ni Errol Spence. Hindi natin may aalis yan. Siyempre, eh, alam ba sa atin, ba't nagkaganito? Eh, bakit ibiglang si, si Ugas ang nakaharap ko? Pero sabi ko nga, Eh baka lahat ng disappointment, lahat ng frustration ni Manny Pacquiao, doon niya iuumbag kay Ugas. Ha? Kasi kumbaga, eh, dapat ang ganda ng laban ko. Eh. Hindi natuloy. Eh, sa'yo kay bubuhos lahat ng uh, kapuisito ko sa nangyari sa laban ito. Ano? Because although Pacquiao wished Errol Spence a speedy recovery from his eye injury, hindi natin may aalis na, teka muna, bakit ka biglang umatras? Ah, kung kailan handang-handa na ako, bigla mong sinira yung diskarte ko eh. Ano? Eh, nagkataon na natin si Ugas. O di sabi, sige, ikaw muna, ikaw ang pagbubunto ng kulang uh, disappointment ko sa nangyaring biglang pagkansela ni Errol Spence. So, I, I do believe it's not gonna take it for granted. Uh, alam na niya yung nangyari kay uh, Jeff Horn. At uh, sinabi nga ni Manny Pacquiao, two decades ago, I was your Dennis Ugas. I, when he was a last-minute substitute kay Lelo Lidwaba at uh, inupset niya itong si Lelo Lidwaba. So alam niyo, Manny Pacquiao, yun ang, yun ang kagandahan pag experienced fighter ka na eh. Lahat ito naranasan mo na eh. You have come full, full circle. So alam mo na itong mga sitwasyon na ito. Hindi ito bago sa'yo. Homer, uh, is a title belt enough motivation for Senator Manny? Yes. Uh, like sabi nga ni uh, Attorney Ed, not only is uh, Senator Manny ano, um, frustrated he is also agitated and very motivated. But what is lost in here, Commissioner, is the nobility by which uh, the senator has approached this fight. Because he could have easily, when Nagwidro suspends, he could have easily withdrawn too. But but Manny, uh, Senator Manny, decided not to. You know why? Because it would have canceled the entire promotion because the main event protagonists are no, no longer there. Pag wala na yung dalawa. So kung makancel yun, that means a lot of Fighters, cutmen, cornermen, employee arenas, ticket sellers, lahat is a ripple effect. They would have lost a lot of payday. So, uh, taking that into account, Senator Mani said, Oh, you know what? I'll still take this fight, even if I'm going to have a respect replacement opponent. Para lang mas save yung promotion, I, I can also still get paid up at the same time. 
So I think right. it's also still motivated, Commissioner, because what the senator can, uh, what will he will do here will also dictate his future. If he, God forbid, if he doesn't do well, it will, uh, of course, uh, affect his pay-per-view draw moving forward. But then if he does really good here, then people can still say, okay, if he fights another fight, we will still keep watching uh, uh, Senator Mali. Because you, you have to remember, Commissioner, although iba na ang kalaban si Ugas na, the same pa rin ang pay-per-view. It's $74.99. Oh. Well, ang sabi sa akin ni uh, Sean Gibbons, medyo mas mababa daw ang paycheck dito ni Senator Manny because nga, sabi niya, eh, uh, iba naman yung, uh, kung baga sa restaurant, iba na yung nagluluto. But anyway, uh, Attorney Ed, ang tanong ko, punta natin si uh, Jordanis Ugas. Uh, alam natin na legit ang kanyang motivation. Uh, he's saying he's fighting a legend. He, this is an opportunity for a huge paycheck and of course, he's fighting for his country. What kind of problem does Ugas pose to a Manny Pacquiao? Or wala bang problema talaga? What do you think? Well, meron din naman ano, unang-una, eh, malaking boksingero itong si Jordanis Ugas. Nakita niyo naman yung pangangatawan nito, bato-bato ano. At uh, pangalawa, uh, magaling na counterpuncher itong si Ugas. Meron siyang potential weapon, yung overhand na kanan. At alam natin, yun ang problema ni Manny Pacquiao being a southpaw fighter coming in nahuhuli siya ng mga counter right hand. Meron din magandang suntok sa bodega. Itong si Jordanis Ugas, he owns a good left hook to the, uh, the body. So something that can be very handy sapagkat uh, dalawang taong walang laban si Manny Pacquiao and uh, Ugas might want to test the conditioning of uh, the senator by going to the body. E nga lamang medyo mabagal, uh, medyo flat-footed, at ang style ni Ugas, uh, kumbaga, he stays in the pocket too long. Yung uh, punching area, para siyang pumapasok, sabi nga ni Dunaire, he's just in front of you, he comes at mm -hmm. you. Eh, yun ang gusto mm -hmm. ni Manny Pacquiao, eh. you come straight to me, huli ka. Hindi ako mahihirapang mm -hmm. uh, mahuli ka ng aking left straight, ang aking mga kombinasyon. So, iyon ang mga strengths and weaknesses ni Ugas. Pero, remember, he has never been knocked out. Uh, three of his four losses were by split decision only. He's a former bronze medalist in the Olympics. Ah, tinalo niya si Terence Crawford for what it's worth during the uh, Olympi ah, during the amateur days niya, no? So, at saka he comes from the ano eh, from the boxing factory of Cuba. Ah, oh. eh, other than uh, Cuban cigars, we all know they make good Cuban boxers. Ayun. <laughs> Totoo yan. Alam naman natin kung gaano kagaling. Well, of oh. course, uh, magaling din sila tumakbo kagaya ni Rigondo. <laughs> Homer. But, but let me let me ask you, Homer. Has Senator, alam natin si Ugas is a right-handed fighter, orthodox, uh, uh, and ang pinagandaan ni Manny is kaliwete, but now, sabi nga niya, okay, yeah, walang problema yan. I'm a politician. I know how to shift alliances also, shift training. Ito, <laughs> uh, home na tanong ko. Has Manny Pacquiao seen a kind of fighter like Ugas? For kami mga hindi, hindi educated sa boxing, meron ka ba may hahambing na fighter na nakalaban ni Senator Manny nakatulad ni Jordanis Ugas. Yeah, I would say uh, I, I don't know if uh, I defer to uh, Tony Ed. He's, he's the he's the boxing savant. But if I were to add my two two, two cents worth, I would refer to um, Julio Eliezer Jorge. Yung kalaban ni Manny Pacquiao in 2002 in the undercard of the Lewis Tyson fight. He was the same fighter. He likes to move forward, but he stays in the pocket and and, and doesn't leave there. So it it allows for uh, Senator Manny to throw the combinations that he like. Kasi, and it, which, it also har harkens me back to the fact that co si Senator Manny, we have to remember, he hadn't fought in 25 months. So I'm interested to know how he would his work rate, his rhythm would be in the first three, four, four rounds because he's going to have to need his legs beneath him uh, to kind of like, you know, see how it goes. But uh, to answer your question, Commissioner, he reminds me of David Diaz, Yung tinalo ni Manny oh, as a, so when Manny Diaz. moved, uh, oh. yeah, move, when he moved at a lightweight, di ba? Mm -hmm. Kasi si David Diaz, magagalit commissioner pag hindi tamaan. So it's just like, uh, <laughs> he is like your Donis Ugas. If you go to YouTube and you watch his fight, yung apat na talo ni uh, Ugas were, were people that are unknowns. Amir Iman, Emmanuel Robles, and Johnny Garcia, except for Sean Porter, of course, which he acquitted himself well. Pero ito yung si Ugas. Palagi siyang gustong pumapasok, pero hindi umaalis. And then if Manny, uh, Senator Manny, 
performs like Senator Mali, throwing punches from all angles, then we could have an easy fight here. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll throw this question to both of you now, Attorney Eddie Komuna. How do you see this fight going? Uh, if you were to describe this in advance, ano sa tingin mo mangyayari dito? And where, where do you think will this fight end up with? Attorney Ed. Well, ang tingin ko dito, I'm looking at a clinical performance ni Senator Pacquiao kontra kay Ugas. Ang tingin ko dito, 12 rounds decision. Uh, Maaaring magkaroon ng flash knockdown in the early rounds. Ang dalangin ko lang, kapag ang labang ito pumunta sa championship rounds, yung 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I hope and I pray that the 42-year-old legs of Manny Pacquiao are still there. Sapagkat remember the Kit Turman fight, around those uh, periods, medyo tinatamaan na siya ni Turman. Pero all things equal, sabi ko nga, normal, eh palagay ko 12-round clinical performance para kay uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao ang aking nakikita. Um, I lost my audio, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner, wala yung audio ko. Uh, I lost my audio. Did you do a commercial break or whatever? Yeah, commercial. Okay, audio. Still have the audio. Uh, it's on their end, right? Yeah, I, I, I can hear the commissioner too. I can hear Homer. I know what I'm going to Homer. Nagbabalik po ang uh, ating uh, palatuntunan at uh, kasama pa rin po natin si Homer Saison live from Las Vegas at si Attorney Ed Tolentino, ang ating veteranong boxing analyst. Homer, same question. Uh, how do you see this fight going in, uh, dito sa laban ni uh, 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 Senator Manny at saka kay uh, Yordeni Sugas? Yesterday, oh, that came out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Omar. Sinulat ko sa column ko uh, yesterday at Spin the PH, the exact same um, narrative with Attorney Ed. 12 rounds for Senator Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Senator Manny, every time he... Uh, and here's my reason why 12 rounds, Commissioner, decision hindi knockout. Every time Commissioner... Ma uh, uh, every time a Senator Manny assaults the microphone in the karaoke, he likes to sing sometimes when we touch. Pero bukas... <laughs> Pag maglaban nila ni Yordones Ogas Commissioner, 
Man, Senator Manny will touch Oga so hard na sabi ni Oga, nako, ayaw ko na, gusto ko na lang, I just want to finish this fight in 12 rounds, gaya ni Ray Gondo. And that's why I think uh, this would be a very boring fight and Senator Manny will have a clinical, like uh, Senator, uh, Attorney Ed said, it will be a clinical 12 round, easy decision win for Senator Pacquiao. All right. As, as a final parting shot, uh, gentlemen, I want to ask you, alam natin na uh, maraming nag-aabang dun sa big fight. And Senator Manny has talked about it. He said he still wants to fight Terrence Crawford. Maybe, uh, again, Errol Spence Jr. Attorney Ed, do you think this is the last fight ni Senator Manny Pacquiao? Well, unless matagal siya, ma-humiliate siya ni Ugas. Ugas, I don't think this is his last fight. I think even Manny Pacquiao doesn't want this to be his last fight. Ayaw niya yung finale niya, eh, ugas. Ano? Gusto niya, Spain, Crawford, and even Mayweather. So tingin ko, lalabang pa itong si Senator Manny Pacquiao barring a major upset by your Dennis Ugas. He'll still be around because there's still some unfinished business sa kanyang karera. Believe it or not, despite all his accomplishments, he feels meron pang kulang sa kanyang karera. Wow, talagang uh, malaking bagay yun. Uh, uh, na sa tingin niya, eh, meron pa kailangan tapusin. Homer, uh, ito na ba ang huling fight? Ni Man hell no. no. Hell no. He's, he's gonna fight at least one more time, Commissioner. If you have a great career, as uh, Senator Manny has, you don't want to end it with a fight against your Dennis Ugas. Uh, what would that be like? That would be Van Gogh, and his obituary would say his last painting was this, you know, Hindi masterpiece. So I think it, this, uh, yeah, and this, I just, I just do not want to entertain the thought na matalo siya ni Uga. So uh, having said that, and having to agree with uh, Attorney Ed, this is not the last fight. All right. Well, uh, we certainly hope that uh, whatever happens, uh, uh, whether he fights again or not, eh, nasa mabuting kalagayan si Senator Manny after this fight. Dahil marami pa siyang kalangang laban, hindi lamang sa loob ng ring. Attorney Ed, uh, Homer Saison, uh, marami salamat sa inyong panahon. Good luck sa ating senador, sa ating pambansang kamao, and we'll see you at the fights. Thank you so much. Commissioner, Commissioner, mali sila. When they, when they say Las Vegas is a city that never sleeps, it's a oh. city that never lets you sleep. Look how haggard I look, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Tama, you know. Uh, uh, laking ganda ng lalaki ngayon ni Attorney Ed. Lahin po kang rested the rested si Attorney Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner, I felt so little kasi... I, two legal minds. Tapos ako, I still, I still have to get my part legal degree. But what an honor, Attorney Ed. What an honor, Commissioner as usual. My pleasure. So Thank here so in much. Las Vegas, Nevada, for power and play. Peace. All right. <laughs> Maraming salamat. Oh, salamat po. Salamat. salamat, Attorney Ed Tolentino. Our uh, pinag, uh, pinag, talagang uh, ginagalang na boxing analyst si Attorney Ed Tolentino. Nakasama natin, of course, yan dun sa mga laban ni Yumir Marshall, ni Lanesti Petesio ng Olympics. Truly a great boxing mind and, of course, uh, one of the best uh, people you can talk to on television. At this point, mga kapatid, ha, gusto ko lang batiin ng isang happy-happy birthday din ang ating uh, butihing mayor ng Paranaque, kaklasiko, Si Mayor uh, Edwin Olivares ng Paranaque, uh, belated happy birthday, Mayor Edwin. Sa aking kaibigan din, si uh, Randy Reyes at si Tere Reyes, happy, happy birthday. Kay Coach Alan Gregorio, happy, happy birthday din ha, kahapon. At sa aking kumpare, si paring Edwin Rodriguez ng Malayang Quezon City, happy, happy birthday din. Ang dami nagbe-birthday. O si paring Rico Meneses din pala, belated happy birthday. All right. Mga kapatid, at this point, yung ating kaninang pinag-uusapan na ating Paralympian is ready. And he's with us ngayon, si Gerald Mangliwan, ang ating uh, flag bearer para sa Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. Magandang magandang umaga, uh, Gerald. Maraming salamat yes, sa pagsama. Sir. Yes po, sir. Good morning po. At uh, nice meeting you po, sir. <laughs> sir. Nakakato. <laughs> Nakakatuwa. Medyo yung camera mo yata, eh, ano, naayusin natin yung audio ni... Yan, yan, yung video. Alright. Gerald, alam mo, uh, alam natin na ikaw ang magiging tagapaghawak ng ating bandila sa opening ceremonies ng Tokyo Paralympics. Ano ang reaction mo dito uh, na ito'y binigay sa'yo bilang isang karangalan? Well, of course, sir. Uh, sa ngayon po is uh, talagang blessed and honor po ako na yung, yung mga tao na alam mo yung talagang uh, matagal nating pinaghihirapan is na-recognize -re po nila at 
binigyan po ako ng pagkakataon nga po na ito, uh, iwawagayway ko din po yung bandila natin sa isa sa mga pinakamataas na uh, sporting event for for us persons with disability. So, ako sir, uh, papunta, uh, papunta ako doon sa ano na taas mo po na i-wave natin yung flag for our million-million na kababayan na we should be proud of na uh, nakarating po tayo doon. And uh, well, of course, we uh, represent po natin ang ang mga kababayan din po natin na uh, kumbaga ipakita, na, ipakita natin sa buong mundo kung anong meron ng mga, uh, mga oh. Pilipino po. Well, napakalaking bagay na tayo ay naroon after a very historic performance ng ating mga atleta naman sa Tokyo Olympics. Now, uh, uh, Gerald, alam mo, ikaw ay isang wheelchair racer. Uh, lumabang ka sa 2014 Asian Para Games kung saan dami mo rin nakuhang medalya doon. And of course, lumabang ka sa Rio uh, Summer Olympics o Summer Paralympics noong 2016. Sa mga hindi nakaka nakakaalam, ano ba yung wheelchair racing? At meron bang standard yung wheelchair na ginagamit ninyo? Gerald? Uh, yes po, yes po. Ang wheelchair racing po, sir, is uh, ang event po namin is same as the ano, nasa track oval. Oh, track oval din po kami nag naglalaro. And then, ang pagkakaiba lang, yung tama po kayo, may meron kaming wheelchair na ginagamit na pang racing talaga siya. So, uh, specialized for sa racing. So, yung sa, nakikita nyo sa video, ganun, ganun, ganun po sir, dalawang gulong sa likod, may isang uh, gulong sa harapan. So, yun yung ano doon. Yun yung ano doon gamit po namin. Pero yung mga rules ng ano anang uh, track and yung sa wheelchair racing is halos parehas naman po. Ang pagkakaiba lang talaga is nakasakay, nakasakay po kami dun sa wheelchair. Yun po. So Alright. may mga standard din po na sukat ng gulong sa likod, sa harap. So ayun po. Alam mo, you have been, uh, sabi nga na, you are a, a disabled athlete dahil uh, paraplegia ka from polio since, uh, two, since dalawang taon, uh, Gerald. No? Ano, ano naging inspirasyon mo? Para malampasan itong disability mo, uh, Gerald. Sir, si, ano lang ano, sa amin kasi, uh, sa akin lang, simple lang kasi, uh, kasi sabi ng mother ko before, noon pa noon pa, alam mo yun, uh, yung kasi yung kalagayan nyo po na, nandiyan na yan yung disability mo eh. So, alam, alam mo yun, ikaw din yung, ano, ikaw din yung makakatulong dun sa sarili mo kung paano mo i-overcome yung mga ganyang ano. Kasi kami nandito lang kami sa ano sa sa likod mo na suportahan ko na yung gagawin mo ginag gusto mong gawin sa buhay mo. So ako naman is talagang uh, to alam mo yung para mawala yung ano doon sa pananaw din ng mga ibang tao. Is inaano ko yung sarili ko na gusto kong ipakita rin na meron sa sa amin po kagaya ko po na may may disability is uh, meron po kaming uh, mga kakayanan. Huwag na po nating tignan din yung kung ano yung nakikita mo kasi kung as ano so dapat may mga bagay din na pwedeng nating tignan na ano so uh, yun po yung isa sa mga nag-aano sa akin para i-push ko yung sarili ko na maging i mean uh, gusto kong ma-reach yung mga na naabot din ng mga kagaya po nating mga ano so yun lang po sir kumbaga uh -huh. gusto ko lang ipakita rin na mayroon but mayroon po tayong ano mayroon po tayong mga puwang din and then Alright. of course uh, to to tawag dito iyan no din sa ibang tao ayun nga po sa ano na magkaroon ng ano yung pagtrato na parehas lang po all right well napakahalaga niya na talagang mapakita ang galing ng mga para athletes natin no but ikaw Gerald 16 years ka nang lumalaban uh, under the national team uh, gaano ka iba itong pagte-training mo ngayon para sa Olympics o sa Paralympics ngayon na nasa ilalim tayo ng pandemya ano yung pinakamalaking hamon na hinarap mo Sir, opo, opo, talagang napakalaki yung ano yung challenge nga po sa nangyari ngayon kasi yung sports talaga namin is kailangan talaga namin mag, uh, mag uh, sa oval talaga, sa track oval. Yun ang training dapat na gagawin. Uh, so, nung nagkaroon po ng pandemic, ang nangyayari lang po is nagkakaroon kami ng indoor training. So, yun yung mga ano, kasi may mga indoor equipment naman, naman kami. So, yun lang yung pag-ano doon kasi ch very challenging talaga kung saan kami yung mga venues ba kasi lahat ng mga karamihan dito sa Manila kasi yung mga venues is ginawang quarantine facilities. So nung recent lang, mga uh, naka, nakapag-oval din naman kami ng mga one month. Uh, so luckily, binigyan po kami ng, ng access sa Imus Cavite. So uh, may raos naman po sir. So kumbaga, oh. yung paraan lang na, yung paraan lang or yung uh, uh, tawag dito, 
gumawa kami ng sistema para ma-maintain lang po yung condition. So, oh. yun, oh, through the ano, ng mga coaches ko po. So, yun po. All right. Uh, Gerald, uh, this is your second Paralympics. Uh, lumabang ka sa Rio in 2016. And of course, lumabang ka na sa World Games. No? But uh, sa mga karanasan mong yun, labing anong mataon sa national team, ano ang uh, natutunan mo na dala-dala mo ngayon patungo sa Tokyo? Well, of course, sir, yung, yun nga po, sabi niyo po, uh, matagal na po. So yung uh, experience-wise, uh, medyo, medyo marami na rin po tayo natutunan. Yung mga exposed naman sa paglalaro is, uh, yun po, na, na, nagawa naman po. Eh, yung, yung pwede kong iano talaga ngayon is yung, alam mo yun, yung uh, gusto ko lang isaksid, uh, I mean, isurpass yung, yung mga performance ko na, ano, so, gusto ko yung sa isa challenge din yung sarili ko na i-beat ko lahat yung mga personal best ko na naitala ko. At the same time kasi nung sarili ko kasi sir, nag, ano, nag-finals po ako sa 400 meters, eh gusto ko po sa lahat ng tatlong event ko is sana makapasok ako sa sa finals. So kung wow. makapasok po tayo sa finals, doon po, bahala na po kung ano yung ano. So, wow. Doon na po. Malaking, malaking bagay yung kung makapasok ka sa finals, talagang uh, malaking uh, pagbubunyi ang mangyayari na naman sa atin dito sa ating bansa. Katulad ng mga nangyari sa ating mga able athletes, no? Doon sa Olympics. Uh, talking about that, uh, Gerald, uh, kayo ba ang mga uh, um, Paralympians eh, na-inspire doon sa nagawa ng ating mga manlalaro naman sa Tokyo Olympics. How is that? Re- how are you reacting to that? Paano, ano ang epekto nun sa inyo? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, ala, amo, sir, talagang proud na proud naman po tayo kasi uh, si, si na yung mga nag-medal, si na Hidili, si na Nesty, si na Yumir, si Carlo, is, uh, every day namin sila nakakasalamuha sa, sa field, for, field sports nga po before. So, alam mo sir, very proud naman talaga po kami. Ako, proud na proud talaga ako yung achievement nila. And then, of course, uh, going to the Paralympic na yung ganun yung performance nila is, yung moral is may, uh, medyo talagang mataas para sa amin din kasi may inspiration na po kami na kung doon namin hugutin yung, yung magiging uh, ano namin dun sa, sa Tokyo. So, sir, ano sa akin is ano lang, yung moral ko is mataas para uh, parang gusto ko rin i, i, i-duplicate o gayahin yung kung ano man po yung yung ano nila na, na achieve nila doon sa ano so hopefully sana pagpalain po tayo ng justice na uh, ibigay din po sa amin yung ganun ano ganun well, talagang uh, aming pinagdarasal ang inyong tagumpay uh, Gerald uh, kayo mga papunta doon uh, I think you're about five athletes yata na papunta doon uh, sa, sa Tokyo uh, before I end alam mo uh, alam natin na uh, iilan lang at marami sa inyo medyo meron medyo medyo may edad na no uh, you have some athletes na mga 50 you are about 41 years old do you think, uh, Gerald, na uh, ang, ang ating mga kinaukulan, ang ating uh, bansa, is doing enough para sa para-athletes na para makapag-develop pa tayo ng mas marami pang mga atleta, mga di- uh, disabled athletes para sa mga international uh, competitions? Uh, Yes sir, uh, regarding po doon is talaga pong sa, sa ngayon po is talagang wala naman po ako masabi sa talagang support ng government para sa amin. Kasi lahat po ng mga pangangailangan talaga is pre-provide nila. Same thing kung ano yung mga inanunay doon sa mga Olympians natin, ganun din po ginawa sa amin para Olympians. So yung support po from the government na talagang galing sa uh, Philippine Sports Commission na ano po ni headed by Chairman Butch Ramirez at yung mga commissioners is talagang uh, lahat po ng mga hiningi namin na ano is ibinigay nila. So sir wala po akong ano doon uh, kumbaga question doon kasi nga po sabi ko hindi kami hindi kami iniiwan eh. Kumbaga kung ano yung program na binigay nila doon sa sa Olympians ganun din po sa amin. So, oh, na- sa akin lang is uh, sana maging tuloy-tuloy na lang po tuloy-tuloy po 'yon. So although uh, may mga may mga sa, 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 ano na may mga bagay din na kailangan din nating kumbaga anuhin. So 'yon. O all in all sir, wala pong ano wala pong problem kasi problema po provide at at the same time well, yung, uh, NSA po namin yung uh, Philippine Paralympic Committee is uh, they're doing naman yung great job for us na tinitignan yung mga pangangailangan din namin. Then, yun, nag-ask po ng tulong from the uh, PSC at mga private sectors din na nagbibigay ng tulong po. Well, ang, uh, alam natin so, kung ano ang... Thank you, grateful lang po ngayon, sir. Oo, oh, alam, ang alam natin kung ano makukuha ng inyong, uh, ng ating mga Olympians, makukuha din ng Paralympians. So, talagang, uh, we're hoping na 
eh, maganda ang maging performance ninyo dyan sa Tokyo. Uh, Gerald, maraming salamat sa oras mo. Aming ipagdarasal at, at ipananalangin ang inyong tagumpay. But uh, yun lang pagpunta ninyo doon ay malaking bagay na para sa ating bansa. Maraming salamat, uh, Gerald, at uh, mabuhay ka. Yan po mga kaibigan, ang ating uh, kasamang si Gerald Mangliwan, ha? ang ating pong Paralympian, uh, uh, ating pong uh, pambato sa wheelchair racing. Sana po ay uh, maayos at uh, ligtas sila sa pagpunta nila sa Tokyo uh, Paralympics. All right, at this point, uh, gusto ko lang po magpasalamat sa lahat ng ating mga tagapagtaguyod ng Power and Play. Una sa lahat, of course, Ang Big Boss Cement, Big Boss sa Tatag, Big Boss sa Tibay. Nandito na ang Big Boss Cement. Di basta matitibag, approved sa kalikasan at sobrang abot kaya. Big Boss Cement is the first eco-friendly cement company in the Philippines. First and only cement that is produced with low to zero percentage of high carbon footprint materials. Big Boss Cement, Big Boss sa Tatag, Big Boss sa Tibay. Uh, marami salamat kay Engineer Gilbert Cruz. Get well, partner. Uh, praying for you all the time. Marami din po salamat of course sa Cherry Loom, ang yerong may aluminum. Sa ganitong pabago-bago ang panahon, mga kababayan, sobrang init tapos biglang uulan. Kailangan natin ng matibay at protektadong bubong. Dapat ang bubong ay yerong may aluminum. Kapag may aluminum, chak na pang matagalan. At isa lang ang alam kong dikalidad na yerong may aluminum, yan ang Cherry Loom. Tibay protektado sa pang matagalang yero. Cher cherry Loom, ang yerong may aluminum. Thank you so much kay paring Elmer Ngo. Marami din po salamat of course sa Elms Resto Bar Group na may branches po sa um, Elms Tapas and Winery located in Cali Bistro Commonwealth Quezon City at sa Elms Grill and Bar sa Poblacion Makati. Pwede niyo pong tawagan ang kanilang mga mobile number 0977-157-0499 or 0966-854-4048 or visit their FB and IG pages for reservations And inquiries, thank you to Ma'am Malu uh, Yambao. Thank you also to Joyride, ang bago ninyong kasundo. Dahil ayaw naming nahihirapan ka, book Joyride Motorcycle Taxi now and experience hassle-free commute. Kapag delivery naman, Joyride ang gamitin. Bagsak presyo pero hindi ang serbisyo. Joyride is now on its lowest rates ever. At ang latest offering ng Joyride, ang JR Mall. So download now the latest super app ng Joyride. Thank you also to Makilach Professional, your school of makeup artistry, the official makeup of Power and Play. Also thanks to Skin, your face and body anti-aging center, with branches at Wilson Street sa San Juan City at sa Alabang Town Center sa Muntinlupa City. For inquiries, please call 0917-890-1640 or 0977-809-8886. Six. Uh, thank you so much to Dr. Richie and uh, Dr. G. Sarmiento. Marami din po salamat, of course, sa Presiderm. Mga kaibigan, sa panahon ngayon, sa gitna ng pandemya, higit natin kailangan ang mga taong ating maasahan, mga lugar na makakapagbigay sa atin ng kaligtasan, mga bagay na ating kakapitan sa anumang oras. Yung sigurado, yung pwede nating tawaging most trusted. Parang Presiderm, your most trusted skincare. Thanks also to Jario Milenio, the uh, official media partner of Power and Play. And to Umami Bowl for uh, the best uh, gyudon and katsudon. Mag-order uh, mag lamang sa Umami Bowl. You can find their pages sa Instagram. I'd like also to thank uh, in a very special way ang Emperador Coffee Brandy who uh, gave us uh, some very, very good products. Marami salamat kay Afi Carpio. At nagpapasalamat din po kami sa Cherry Tigo. Uh, Cherry Tigo crossovers. Cherry Tigo ng uh, ating kaibigan si Romel Sitin at ni uh, Judy Garcia, ang ating marketing head ng Cherry Tigo. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. All right, we will take a quick break sa aming pong pagbabalik sa Power and Play. Mga kasama natin, the one and only, the Mighty Mouse PBA legend, Coach Jimmy Alapag. Dito po sa Power and Play, hatid sa inyo ng Big Boss Cement at ng Cherry Loom. Welcome to the 
ค่ะฮาวดูไอโน่เอสตีวันเซมเฟย์สมาร์ทอัพโต How do I know it's the one? Simply smart Apple. Kaibigan, ha, tuloy-tuloy po tayo. Ang dami na nagpapadala ng kanilang opinion dun sa ating pong pinupulsohan. Again, ang ating pong pulso issue today. Uh, Mananakout ba ni Senator Manny Pacquiao, si Jordanis Ugas? At kung mananakout po, anong round? Ha? Yung mga gustong sa magpadala po ay mag-post lamang sa ating mga Facebook pages. Alright, pinag-uusapan natin ang mga kampyon. Ang ating pong susunod na makakausap ay tunay na kampyon. Hindi lamang sa kampyon sa PBA, kampyon sa ating national team. Ngayon po ay siya rin ay kampyon sa NBA Summer League. Walang iba kundi ang ating pinagmamalaki, the captain, the mighty mouse, PBA legend, Jimmy Alapag. And like, as I promised, uh, we're very happy to have with us, of course, a very, very dear friend, somebody that I back a long, long way because he was my 10th <laughs> pick overall back in 2003. No other than the captain, the Mighty Mouse, Coach Jimmy Alapag. Jimmy, it's good to see you. Thank you, Calm. Thank you for having me, and uh, it's great to see you. You know, first of all, uh, how are you doing? How, you left about a year ago, right? And uh, what have you been doing since then, aside from coaching in Sacramento, uh, with Sacramento? Yes, Tom. Uh, it was a big year for our family. Um, you know, we, we decided to, to move back to the States for, for the time being. Um, you know, we just felt like it was, you know, a better space for our kids right now. And, you know, considering my, my parents are getting older um, and, and with everything obviously happening around the world, I just, Elgin and I both felt best that it was, you know, a good time to just be close to the family. Um, so that's, that's been great to, to reconnect with everyone after having been gone for, for so long. And um, you know, obviously, been been busy and just coming off this uh, this summer stint with, with Sacramento. So you know, the family's great. Um, you know, thankful to to be healthy and together, and uh, you know, really really uh, thankful for the experience uh, over the past yeah. almost month um, with with the Kings. Well, you're very very fortunate because you know a lot of things have uh, really shut down here. You know, the PBA isn't playing, and yes, uh, yes. you know, 
many of the kids are not leaving their houses. They haven't been out maybe in over a year, so your kids are really, mm -hmm. really lucky to be out there. But let's talk about being out there, and being out there means for you winning another uh, championship this time with the Sacramento Kings <laughs> in an unbelievable summer league uh, for the Kings. You beat the Boston Celtics 100 to uh, 67 in a rout in that championship game. I got to see a little bit of that. Uh, you know, Jimmy, this is your second time with the Kings. Mm -hmm. uh, can you compare, you know, the first time you were there as, uh, uh, and of course, to now that you have won a crown for them? Well, you know, come. I think I think the biggest difference, my, you know, with with my first experience with the Kings, um, you know, I was coming in, obviously didn't know anybody, um, and so, you know, I really just took it as an opportunity to, you know, a lot of times just kind of, you know, be there, take notes, listen, um, um, and and really just get a feel for what it was like being in that NBA space um, as a coach. Um, but you know, again, really thankful and. and you know, appreciative of, of this opportunity this past summer, um, you know, with, with Coach Bobby Jackson, uh, with Paul Johnson, who's, you know, a GM, and also Monty McNair, um, for, for giving me the opportunity to to be with the team uh, for the summer league. And uh, I think, I think, Tom, I think the biggest difference for, for this second time around was I think I had a much more engaging role um, mm -hmm. as an assistant coach, um, you know, in terms of game preparation, in terms of scouting, in terms of video, um, really – you know, they, it was it was awesome to have an, an active voice uh, with Coach Bobby Jackson and the rest of the staff. So uh, yeah. it was a lot of fun, um, a lot of work. But uh, you know, again, we had a great group of guys, and uh, it was it was great to see them be rewarded for all the hard work that they put in. Yeah. Before I go to you know your role and how you got there, Jimmy, how does uh, this victory, this championship of Sacramento? I know it's it's a summer league, and you know most of the time, summer league is really more about you know player development, scouting mm -hmm. players, and and really trying to get the, the young guys uh, get used to the NBA life. But do you think this has have, have uh, any impact? This has any impact on the uh, regular season for the Sacramento Kings that is that is still looking for their first postseason? Yes, Tom, I, I think so. Um, you know, I, I hope that this is, you know, this this adds momentum to you know to the Kings team going into training camp um, as they prepare for the season. Um, you know, again, I, the, the team has had struggles, you know, over over the past few years. Um, it's, it's been quite some time since they've been in the playoffs. Um, but, you know, you have to start somewhere. And, uh, you know, again, I, I hope that this this is the start of them going back to the team that, you know, you know, won quite a bit uh, back in the day with, with Coach Bobby Jackson, Coach Doug Chris, Steve Lade, um, and those guys. And, you know, there's there's such an amazing fan base in Sacramento. And uh, it was it was great to be a part of this. Um, as they get ready for the upcoming season. You, you, uh, you mentioned names that are legendary, you know, Doc Christie, Bobby Jackson, of course, Vladi Divac. And these are, mm. they are very much instrumental in yours. For yeah. those who are unaware, uh, Jimmy, how did you get to this role a second time, of course? And uh, as you mentioned, you've got a more engaging role. What exactly were you tasked to do for the Sacramento Kings? So, so come um, from my from my first stint with them, uh, you know, I just felt like Coach Bobby Jackson and I really hit it off well. Um, I think, you know, I thought we 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 approached the game the same way. We, we saw the game the same way. Him being, a, you know, a guard as well. Um, and and from the time that I left, we stayed in contact often. Um, you know, he would check in with me. I would, you know, I would be following the Kings. Um, and then leading up to this summer, um, they had a, a mini camp in L.A. Um, about a month and a half ago um, in preparation for the summer. And he invited me to come down and, and spend some time with the team. And then that ultimately led um, to them asking me to join them for the summer, uh, for the summer league again. And so um, again, you know, it was, it was a huge blessing. Uh, I was so excited to, to be back and, and see a lot of familiar faces from the first time that I was with them. Um, and yeah, and it went from there. You, you know, this, this team that you handled is uh, pretty very, you know, Pretty young. They're uh, mm -hmm. a bunch of young guys. You maybe <laughs> yes. Genesi Metu being the most experienced, maybe the oldest, not necessarily experienced, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, of Southern Cal. But you've got really good good guys, including the number nine pick in the draft. They impressed you the most of, uh, among this batch, uh, Jimmy. And how much uh, did you work with these people? Well, you know, you know, come again. You know, it was it was awesome to be a part of such a great group. 
um, you know, in the summer league, simply playing for jobs, whether, whether it's the NBA or the G league or, you know, a big club overseas, you know, it's, it, it's a challenge to get, you know, 14, 15 guys to really be on the same page and, and being unselfish and playing for one another and understanding that by doing that, you give yourself the best chance to win and put yourself in a position to get a great job um, afterward. And so, um, you know, we had a great group, you know, the guys really came into to the summer camp, you know, ready to work. Um, you know, they, they trusted coach Bobby and, and what he was trying to, to implement. And again, you know, you know, they were rewarded with a championship. Um, I think, you know, wow. by his work ethic, um, mm -hmm. his leadership, you know, for, for being a, a A rookie. I mean, you know, he's coming off a national trainer in his approach to 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 playing. Um, you know, being being a young guy, you know, you, you you would hear him talk to the guys in the huddles. You would see him set, you know, the example at practice by by how hard he worked. And defensively, my goodness, uh, I, I I don't know if I've seen anybody with as good an on ball yeah. defense as him right. um, in a long long time. So I think it was a great pickup for for the for the Kings. And uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing his his influence um, on the team for the upcoming season. Dagan Mitchell, uh, you know, stop uh, Peyton Pritchard of Boston in that oh, championship oh, game. Oh, oh. Peyton Pritchard was yes, averaging about 20 points a game, and all of a sudden he was just shut down by Davian Mitchell and just an impressive uh, performance for for the young guy. You know, coach. Can you tell us, you know, for us people uh, here in Manila, it's, this is not something that is regular. We don't see a summer league here. We don't see young kids playing uh, just to get jobs. Most of the time, uh, these are behind closed doors, or at least you've drafted people already here in the PBA. When, when in the NBA, what are coaches looking for when they um, attend summer league? What are they looking for from these players? Well, you know, come on, you know, obviously it's, you know, it's, it's talent, right? But, but the thing is, I think the way that the, the game of basketball has evolved through the years is, you know, there's, the, there's a, an overload of talent, to be honest, because kids are, you know, being coached better, training better, you know, at an early age. But I think, I think what teams are, are really looking for is, you know, guys who can fit what they're trying to do as a team. And, and a lot of that, you know, isn't just the talent. It's, it's the character. It's the, it's the work ethic. And, and, and what can you add in terms of value um, to an NBA team? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, again, I think, you know, for the guys we had, it, it was great to see everybody really come in and, and focused and, and really trying to play the right way and, and going out there and, and giving maximum effort. Actually, when, we, when I was watching your team, I could see shades of you with Louis King and, you know, the, the way he handled that, uh, <laughs> that team, you know. <laughs> The kid's great. Uh, he's a terrific player as well. But, of course, there's one guy, although you did not play against him, that many Filipinos are very interested about. And, that's, of course, that is Jalen Green, the number two pick mm -hmm. in the NBA draft this year. He had a tremendous uh, start in the summer league. He had to stop, unfortunately, because he was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, guarding from injury. But your impressions about Jalen Green, did you get did you get a chance to, uh, you know, talk to him and uh, really get to know a little bit? Uh, you know, the playing style and I guess the attitude of Jalen Green? You, you know, come, I, I didn't get a chance to see Jalen while I was in Vegas. Um, you know, they, they we had about six teams at our hotel. I think they were at another hotel, um, you know, during their stay in Vegas. But, I mean, obviously, you know, a big-time talent con. Um, you know, I think everybody sees, you know, the the athleticism, you know, the, the speed and quickness that, that he plays with. And, and um you know, he was really, really impressive. I got a chance to watch uh, a couple of his games be before he uh, he came up with that that hamstring injury. But I mean, really, really impressive, Tom. You know, for for a young player, I think I think his experience last year in the G League was a big help because it gave him it gave him an opportunity to really get a better understanding of the of the pro game, especially especially in the NBA. Um, but I mean, he got off to a blazing start in Vegas, and um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure I'm sure the Rockets are, are really excited about. Um, who they drafted um, this year. Well, you know, I know the Sacramento Kings got you because you are not only a terrific player, who has got a tremendous uh, record, but also a trem tremendous mind of basketball. But, you know, when you talk to these people, uh, do they ever ask you about Filipino talent? And 
is the Filipino talent, especially now that we have so many now trying uh, to play abroad and uh, uh, taking their chances and uh, spreading their wings, do you think we're far behind uh, in terms of probably making it to the to the summer league one day? No, absolutely not, Tom. I think I think I think we're we're right on track, and and I hope that you know my presence you know in the summer league it c- continues to be kind of a, a platform for Filipino players. Obviously, I don't play anymore, uh, but but hopefully. It, it blazes a trail for it to get that opportunity soon. Um, you know, I, I, I still think it's, I think it's great for Philippine basketball I, I, that, that some of these younger players are, you know, getting an opportunity to showcase their talents abroad. Um, you know, at the end of the day, no matter where they play, they're still representing the country. And, and I think that's something that, that we should embrace. Um, and, and I think those kids should understand that it's a huge responsibility comes with that. Because when you're representing a country that has, such a huge, huge passion for the game. Um, you know, the responsibility that comes with that is is big. Um, but I think it's a big opportunity for them. And uh, again, I think it's it's great for Philippine basketball. Well, you know, I, I know you're one of the uh, more astute students of the game. You you really try to learn as much, and you're like a sponge, easy to pick up so many things. What have you? What have been the biggest uh, takeaway so far for you? from the summer league, from a coaching standpoint, Jimmy, in terms of maybe coaching philosophy, preparation of, uh, of teams, and even uh, player development? Um, you know, Kam, I've, I've learned so much in the past month, um, really in, in all those spaces, in, in terms of player development, philosophy, terminology. Um, and again, I've, I've just continued to try to be a sponge with all of it, um, you know, really paying a close attention to what Coach Bobby and the rest of the staff have been trying to to implement uh, and again just just continuing to try to learn and grow as a coach but uh it's been amazing and uh again this this summer especially just because I, i've i've had a more active role um you know i even sat on the front of the bench you know a couple of times as, yeah. you know You know, you know, kind of, kind of blew my mind. A, a really proud moment for myself, and, and 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 understanding that, you know, I'm not just representing myself and my family, but but ultimately the Philippines. And so, uh, um, again, it, it was great to be out there. Absolutely. You know, I was thrilled to see your uh, pictures uh, standing beside Coach Bobby <laughs> Jackson. You know, in his ear, and you know, really being very, very uh, vocal and and uh, animated on the sidelines. But of course, one other guy that you, I saw a picture of you with. Is Coach Eric Spolstra, and yes. um, you know that that was very interesting. Um, describe that moment when you got to meet Coach Eric, and um, uh, were there any tips that were given to you during that time? No. Hey, so, Tom, I have a I have a funny story for you. So, I, I met Coach Spo the, the first time I was with with the Kings. Um, I was at a coaching seminar, and he and I had met previously uh, on his visit to Manila years ago. Um, and so we met the first time, had a, had a chance to talk for a while. And so this year, um, we were we were coming back from practice. And I think it was like our, our first or second practice in Vegas. We hadn't played a game yet. And I hadn't seen my family in about two weeks. So LJ and the kids, they drove to Vegas with her dad uh, to meet me at the hotel. So kind of funny story. So I'm, <laughs> I'm walking into the hotel. And as soon as I walk in, my kids see me. So all three of my kids come running they give they give me a big hug. So I literally have a uh, you know my son's gonna be nine here in two weeks. So a nine year old, my six year old daughter, and my three year old son like draped over me, right? So I'm hugging them, and you know they're you know they're trying to tell me a million different things. And as I look up, I suppose right in front of me, oh. and he was like, and he was like, oh hey Jimmy, and I'm like, oh sorry, coach, just give me a second. So you know I put my I put my kids down and. You know, obviously shook his hand and uh, we had a chance to talk for a bit. And, you know, he just said, hey, you know, it's great to see you back here. Um, and so, you know, we, we chatted briefly and he just said, you know, it's, it's great to see you, you know, here helping coach Bobby Jackson for, for summer league. Um, you know, great to see you. And again, we, we spoke for a few minutes, but it was just so funny that, you know, I literally have all three of my kids draped over me. Yeah. And I look up <laughs> and he's right in front of me. So, um, no, it was, it was great to see. It's great to see coach. Well, obviously he, he's one of the best in the NBA. And so. Um, it's always great to to reconnect with them. 
I, I hope your kids understood who you were uh, talking to. Because, uh, <laughs> no, no, they had no idea. They had no, no idea. idea. I'm sure they said, uh, who's this guy disturbing our moment with our dad? <laughs> you know, you know, Jimmy, you know, you, you were a guy that was already coaching here in the Philippines. Uh, you coached the ALA Filipinas to a championship in the ABL. You were, of course, already part, uh, once upon a time, of the Morocco coaching staff, as well as the San Miguel Beermen. So many people expected, with you being one of the most prepared, the most experienced, and perhaps... Uh, you know, uh, the, one of the smartest people that could get into a coaching job. Why did you leave and not take your chances here in the Philippines, Jimmy? You know, honestly, Tom, it, it was it was a family decision first and foremost. Um, you know, like you like, like you spoke about earlier. You know, with the kids not being able to to go outside. Um, you know, I have I have so much love for our country, and, and that will never change. But I just felt for right now, you know, talking to my wife and, and my family. You know, I, I wanted to, we wanted to try to, you know, provide the best space for our kids and, and not really have them feel the effects of what's, of what's happening because they're so young. Um, so that was really, you know, the, the, the priority for us. Um, but again, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always open to, to coming back and, and, and possibly coaching the Philippines again one day. But, you know, at the same time, while we're here, you know, you know, you have a family to feed and, and a family to take care of. And so, right. you know, just, just try to continue to be persistent and, and build relationships and, and continue to, to, to network with different people and, and to see, uh, you know, what opportunities there, there might be. And again, um, for this opportunity in the Summer League to, to open back up and, and to rejoin the Kings, um, it meant a lot. And, uh, you know, to have a, a more active role in this, in this second stint with them, I mean, uh, you know, at the end of the day, as long as I've been around the game, as, as long as I've been a part of the game, I, I'm still, you know, in my soul, a basketball fan. And so Absolutely. Um, you know, to be there, to be there and, and to try to give whatever wisdom that I could to the, to the younger players that we had this summer, um, it was it was really, 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 really cool. And talking about that wisdom and the opportunities, uh, obviously, Coach Jim, uh, Jimmy, the, the, I guess the goal is to be coaching somewhere there hopefully in the NBA. Is that the ultimate plan for your career? And how much closer are you to that with this uh, stint in the Summer League with the Sacramento Kings? Well, well come on. I hope I'm closer. <laughs> I hope. I hope, I hope are, are, there, are, there any are, there, are there any talks now between you and, yeah. and, and, and Vladi and, and Coach, and coach uh, um, Luke Walton? So I'll be so so come up. I, I have a meeting, um, you know, this coming weekend with, wow. with the GM, with the GM, uh, Monty McNair, Paul Johnson, and, and, and Coach Bobby. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't I don't know. You know, they just said they want to, to talk again. Um, but, you know, I, I hope that the, the impression that I made, you know, these these first two stints with, with Sacramento, you know, I hope that they got a chance to see, you know, not only the, the, the type of of coach I am, but, but the type of person that I am as well. And, and someone who takes a lot of pride in, in the game and, and, you know, values, you know, the opportunities that, that I do get. Um, and, and someone who, you know, is ready to come in and work every day. And that's, that's always been, you know, the, the foundation for, for everything that I've done from my time playing to, to now making this transition to coaching. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to, to hear what they have to say and, and, um, you know, we'll go from there. I'm getting goosebumps, uh, Jimmy, really. Uh, you know, just thinking that... All right, mga kaibigan, yan po ang uh, panayam natin kay uh, Coach Jimmy Alapag. And of course, the announcement that he made na meron na siyang usapan and hopefully ay uh, ikaw nga matuloy ang kanyang pagko-coach with the Sacramento Kings. Talaga pong kinalibutan ako doon. Really goosebumps moment for me knowing that uh, we might have a Filipino coach finally making the NBA Pagdasal po natin yan, may meeting daw si Coach Jimmy uh, this coming few days with the uh, management of the Sacramento Kings for a regular job, hopefully, uh, with the team. And uh, our first Filipino coach, or maybe second, uh, si Coach Eric nga pala Spolstra, ang ating unang Pinoy. And hopefully si Jimmy ang susunod. Congratulations to the Mighty Mouse, Coach Jimmy Alapag. All right. At this point, mga kaibigan, uh, patuloy po tayong tututok sa inyong mga pinupulsuhan and maybe later we'll have a chance to uh, mention all of these names. Mga Franz uh, Toys, James Uy, Francisco Garcia, marami na po nagpapadala sa atin ng mga uh, opinion nila.
We will now bring in the, our interview with another champion sa ating uh, Champion Saturday. Ito naman po ang ating uh, panayam sa naging kampiyon ng PVL Open Conference, the first professional volleyball championship na nakuha ng Cherry Tigo. At makakasama po natin, walang iba kundi ang kanilang mga tanyag na mga players, the Santiago Sisters and Shaya Adorador plus Jasmine Nabor. Ito po ang ating panayam with the Cherry Tigo crossovers. At kagaya po ng ipinangako natin, kasama natin ngayon ang mga kampiyon ng PBL Open Conference 2021. Walang iba kundi ang uh, Santiago Sisters, si Dindin at si Jaja, of course, at ang kanilang mga mauhusay na talaga namang uh, uh, kakampi si Shaya Adorador and si Jazz Nabor. Magandang-magandang uh, araw sa inyo, ladies. Uh, congratulations. Magandang araw po. Magandang araw, sir. Ano, naka-recover naka na ba kayo sa, sa inyong, sa inyong uh, hindi lamang sa papol kung hindi nyo sa celebrasyon? Somehow, nakaka-recover na rin po. Kasi, um, tawag dito, it's almost five days, then four, four days after nung game. All right. Well, you know, let's go straight to the uh, to the uh, experience ninyo dito sa PBL Open Conference. And, I, and I'd like to ask Din Din, uh, uh, alam mo, this is your first championship in the last five years. Uh, and of course, uh, nasa pamilya din. Your last one with Photon. Uh, mo nga. Can you compare the experience nitong uh, gold medal na to kumpara dun sa five years ago, no 2016? Ibang-iba um, kasi yung ngayon kasi lahat kami, uh, yun nga, nakababble kami and more uh, more bonding ang mga teammates kasi dati syempre parang sinisingit mo lang yung parang team bonding eh. Ngayon talaga nakababble and Yun, um, magkakakilanan kayo, um, lalalim yung samahan nyo, um, madaming challenge kayo na sama-sama. And yun nga, parang sa hirap, ginhawa, magkakasama kami ngayon. Kaya iba tong, iba tong bubble na to, this, uh, iba rin tong liga na to. Kasi yun nga, all the way sama-sama kami ng ilang buwan and um, masaya. Well, uh, alam natin, Jaja, that uh, sabi nga ni Dindin, napakarami ng pinagdaanan nyo because you played inside a bubble doon sa Ilocos Norte. So, can you ano, describe to us uh, yung mga pinagdaanan ninyo even before you got to the finals, even before you got to start playing, ano talaga yung mga ika nga eh, pinagdaanan ninyo as a team, ikaw as a person, uh, para lamang makarating doon sa punto na magiging competitive at least. I think one of the biggest struggle ng team is itong pandemic. Kasi um, bawal gumamit ng gym. I mean, yung um, court, bawal gumamit. And then, lahat kami nahiwalay sa family namin. Um, and yung social, uh, ano ba yung, um, yung kumbaga kung anong buhay talaga namin, like kung nasa bahay kami or something na gumagala kami. Ganun. So, nawala yun. And then napunta kami sa isang bubble training na nasa isang bahay lang kami. Puro weeks lang yung ginaga, ginagawa namin. And kunyari, makakapag big pass kami pero wala kaming, wala kaming court. Ganyan. And then pumasok kami ng, pumasok kami ng um, Ilocos. In five days, mag-start na yung liga namin. Uh, along the way, yung nag-tournament nag na nag-start na yung liga. Nagkaroon kami na magandang start. But then, kinulang kami nung kubalit your... Tapos, yun yung parang naging um, wake-up call. Hindi na wake-up call. Parang nakalo kami. And then, maraming naging challenge. Parang yun yung naging challenge dito sa team namin na um, maraming lumabas ng problema. And with the clear coaches. So, 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 nagkaroon kami ng proper communication, proper lahat. Kung baga, wake up, na, nagising kami lahat na Tama nga, no? Dapat um, walang halong emosyon yung mga ginagawa natin and dapat may proper communication tayo, open communication and um, magandang samahan, ganyan. And dapat sinacherish natin every moment, every time na magkakasama tayo. At the same time, um, oh. nag-work, uh, I mean, um, mas nang ibabaw na sa amin yung Word of God. Kasi parang nung una, players lang yung nagdadasal bago matulog, ganyan. Ngayon, 
buong team na. Hmm. So, ang biggest um, ano sa amin, bumuo, is yung, yun nga, yung pagdadasal namin before matulog and morning na magkakasama kami. To be crowned as the first ever professional volleyball uh, team. Kasi before, hindi pa kayo professional. Ito yung unang-unang corona yun, nakuha rin natin, na kayo ay professional. Ano ang ibig sabihin para sa inyo lahat ito? Siguro I'll begin muna with you, din din and then I will go with Shaya at saka kay, uh, kay Jazz. Paano ba? Um, Siyempre, mas ano, kumbaga, ito parang mas makikilala, I mean, mas makikilala, hindi naman makikilala ng tao. Parang ano sa amin to, parang ito na, yung, parang ito na yung work namin, and syempre, halos lahat naman ng mga, ng mga players talagang gusto makapunta sa professional mm. league. So parang sa amin, parang challenge, parang sa lahat ng players, nagiging challenge to na magpursigi pa eh. So ito na yung, kumbaga, ito na yung pinakamataas na mapupuntahan ng mga players, yung mga, tong professional league. Akala, akalain mo ba, Jazz, na aabot ka sa ganitong level na professional at uh, ikaw ang unang champion? Um, lahat naman po pangarap maglaro sa pro. So, sobrang sarap po sa feeling na first time mag-pro tapos champion po agad. Tapos sila pa po yung kasama ko. Al alam mo, ang, ang isang nakakatawang story din of course dito, Shaya, ay yung story mo. Kasi for a very long time, nung ikaw ay naglalaro sa UAAP, Eh, with the UE, of, uh, Warriors of course, hindi, Lady Warriors, hindi masyadong nagpapapanalo kayo. And now, here comes your uh, championship, your gold medal. After all of those years na pinagdaanan mo na uh, meron ka, nagkaroon ka ng uh, parang 50 plus game losing streak, di ba? <laughs> sa first two years mo sa UAP. Uh, ito ba parang, kumbaga parang sa iyo, eh, redemption? Ano bang... pakiramdam na magiging kampiyon coming from that na experience mo as a collegiate tracks? Nung college po kasi, um, gusto lang namin is mapakita yung um, tinatulong sa, sa atin nung uh, university, nung school mismo. And yun nga, syempre yung UE talagang nasa baba na po bago pa kami pumasok. And mahirap talaga siyang um, paauhunin, ganun. Mahirap talaga siyang i-stop yung losing streak. Lalo na yung mental yung unang-unang um, kailangan baguhin. And yun na nga, coming from yun nga sa first league na to, PBL and champion po po, sobrang grabing <laughs> big opportunity po talaga para sa amin. And grabe rin po yung spirit ng bawat isa. Grabe rin talaga yung spirit ni Jaja, ni Ate Dindin, yung base mode nila sa paglalaro, lumalabas. Kaya paano hindi po kami mas, parang mahawa. Si God po talaga yung naging center no. ng team namin. Kaya talagang pagka ano, nabuboost kami talaga. Alam mo yung goosebumps, sir? Nakakatuwa. As in, oh, nandito po talaga si God sa likod namin sa bawat galaw namin. Doon namin na nag-start na ay sigad na po talaga yung naglalaro. Lalo na po nung championship game. Well, alam natin na hindi naging madali. At puntahan na natin yung paglalaro nyo mismo dun sa playoffs, no? Uh, dun sa semifinals at saka sa finals. Hindi hindi naging madali yun. Pero before that, parang yung elimination round din yun, okay lang. You went through uh, the elimination round uh, maayos. Uh, you breeze through some teams. Meron kayo mga, meron kang kayong team na nakalaban na na-accept kayo. Masabi mo nga ni Jaja kanina, may to wake up call yun sa Valley Pure. Uh, did you ever, Jaja, um, think during that time na simulan natin sa semifinals, natalo kayo first game uh, sa semifinals, did you ever think, and then of course, natalo kayo rin first game ng the finals, finals, na hindi to para sa inyo, na, na medyo... Um, Uh, medyo mah ma mahirap ang magiging panalo na manalo dito. I think um, hindi siya naging hindrance. Yung mga um, like yung natalo kami ng game one, talo kami nung, I mean, same game one nung semifinals and finals. Kasi um, for me, di ba nawalan po kami ng training. So, 
mas na take ko siya as like um game one is like our our practice kasi dun pa lang namin nakuha yung plano paano yung galaw dun sa team na kalaban namin um paano namin uh, paano kami paano namin i-execute yung strategies na gusto namin so hindi ko na isip talaga na matatalo kami or hindi namin makukuha yung championship title na yun kasi for me when you think na malu- matatalo kayo agad it will be like ayun na yun hindi ka na kumbaga mawawala yung pinaka dream mo or mawawala yung pinaka kumbaga goal ng team nyo para pinakita right. mo sa teammates mo na wala matatalo na lang tayo but then nakita ko sa kanila on fire talaga sila sa court oh. na hindi kahit tambak kami nakikita mo na um yung dedicated uh, i mean dedication nila sa sa bawat puntos na ginagawa nila so never nag ano nag na punta sa isip ko na matatalo kami yes na po ako nga yun eh. Alam mo, first game, uh, in fact, I, I mentioned it in a post na sabi ko, parang nahihirapan yung mga libero nyo. But in the second and the third game, si uh, Dorembes really stepped up. Ang ganda ng kanyang pinakita. Ang ganda ng pinakita ni Maylin Pat. Ang, ang ganda ng pinakita ni uh, Mumayka. And everyone else na, na talaga nag, nagtulong-tulong. No? So, but uh, let me go, go to this. Uh, yung bang compressed schedule din din, uh, naging niyo. Um, medyo kasi alam naman natin sunod-sunod yung game niyo. Was that something na kinabahan kayo na dahil gano'n ang schedule niyo? Actually, ano, parang minsan naiisip mo na ang hirap kasi parang first time sa buong <laughs> ano namin din namin na experience yung everyday game. Sobrang hirap pero hindi kami pinayabayaan nga ng coaches namin, ng mga PTs namin to recover past and ano, parang tinake lang namin siya as ano eh, a challenge. And syempre, kailangan positive ka rin mag-isip. Kasi once na inisip mo yung pagod, talaga mararamdaman mo yung pagod. Pero kami, mm-hmm. tinake namin siya as a challenge na, na na professional na kami na kung anong ipagawa sa amin, kakayanan namin. Yun. And yun nga, parang hindi naman, um, hindi nga kami pinabayaan ng coaches namin kasi... Um, sobra yung hirap nila kasi everyday talaga ano nag nag ice bath kami para maka-recover agad sila yung nagbubuhat para sa amin itaakyat pa nila sa second floor and then syempre minsan yung game namin 6 pm na talagang yung mga PTs namin magpupuyat para ma-release or ma-relax yung katawan namin talagang hmm. mahirap pero tinitig namin as a talent so naging madali sa amin and yun nga parang minindset namin na uh, um, wala masakit sa amin may goal kami kaya parang hindi mo na maramdaman yung pagod Af- parang after na lang nung nag-champion na parang ito na yung pagod namin naramdaman namin siya after nung pag-uwi namin <laughs> sa ASEA eh talaga maganda naman yung inuwian niyo yun. <laughs> <laughs> kaya nga po sulit yun yung pagod kaya parang ansaya parang yung pagod na wala talaga ng time na nag-champion na kami. Uh, Just uh, alam natin na ang hinarap ninyo ay napakagaling na team, Creamline, uh, with all their stars from Eliza to Toss and to Risa and everyone. Uh, were you ever intimidated? Na-intimidate pa kayo sa kalapan ninyo na Creamline? Hindi po. Kasi alam po namin kaya namin sila. Kumbaga, buo sila, pero alam namin na mas buo kami ganun kasi dahil nga din po sa mga sinakripisyo namin, yung mga pinangahawakan namin simula umpisa, yun talaga yung pinangahawakan namin para makuha yung goal po ng team namin. Shaya, gano'ng kadali ang laro pag ang kakampi mo ay ang Santiago Sisters? <laughs> Ano, hindi madali. <laughs> Parang hindi madali. <laughs> hindi, um, sir, outside the court po kasi may kita mo talaga yung discipline nila. Talagang discipline sila pagdating sa recovery. Alam po namin na straight, uh, straight yung games. Straight na sunod-sunod po, ganun. May kita mo talaga yung ano, magpapa-release sila. Sila mismo yung magsasabi sa coaches namin, magiging open talaga sila kung ano nararamdaman nila. Tapos matutulog sila ng talagang yung sleeping time nila, 
the sleeping habits nila para lang maka-recover for tomorrow's game. So yun, na-adapt po namin lahat yun. And kaya rin po siguro talaga kami nag-work as one. Same goes sa loob ng court. Like si Shaya, si Labuding, sila Ate Maylin. May times na nahihirapan sila. But then pag sinabi mo, dito kami, pumalo ka lang, mag-receive ka lang, um, mag-set ka lang, um, dumiskarte ka lang, kami bahala. Nandito kami para alalayan ka. Kaya naging, for me, naging madali yung trabaho ng bawat isa. Kasi naka-align, connected lahat. Alright. Well, very interesting because uh, on the other hand, uh, siguro din din, what's that? Yung, yung mas sinasabi ni Jaja talagang napakaraming tulong din ay binibigay sa inyo ng inyong mga teammates. Alam nila na kayo ang mga pag, uh, uh, leaders ng team. Lalong lalo ka na, you're one of the veterans of the team. Pero on the other hand, ano naman ang mga na, 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 na itulong sa iyo as a, as a veteran ng yung mga kakampi? How were they supporting you? Especially those moments na talagang down na down ng team. Ako si ano... As in, siguro ako lang yung nakikita nilang pumapatay. Pero ako kasi, mas nakikita ko na sila ang gumag... I mean, sila ang nagbibigay para makapatay ako ng bola. Kasi parang ako, parang kay Shaya, hindi nag-receive lang siya. I mean, nag-receive siya ng nag-receive para maiset ni Jasmine. And then si Jasmine, sinatan ako na sinatan na maganda. So ako, kung nakikita nilang ako yung pumapatay, sila yung nagpapaka, unang nagpapakahirap bago ko patayin yung bola. So sila yung napaka-importante talaga sa team. And syempre, ito nga volleyball teamwork. So ako talaga, sila talaga ang pinapasalamatan ko. Kasi unat sa pool, hindi ko magagawa yun kung wala sila. Kaya sila ang pinakamahalaga para sa akin. Well, it's, it's obvious talagang full whole team effort na pagkapanalo ng uh, charity ko dito sa TVL. Alam ko sanay kayo na maraming fans na nanonood sa mga laro ninyo. Women's volleyball is so popular na talagang yung energy ng fans, you feed off them and alam natin na yun ang nagbibigay sa inyo ng lakas. Itong senaryo na to na walang fans sa loob ng uh, venue, ano naging motivation ninyo dito, Jazz? Anong ginamit mo para ma-motivate kayo throughout the bubble tournament? Um, actually, nakakamiss nga po yung ano, madaming nanonood sa'yo, madaming sumusuporta, may mga nagsi-cheer. Pero, nung sa Bubble League po, parang mas, para sa akin ha, mas okay na, yun, parang tahimik yung paligid mo kasi mas nakakapag-focus ka sa game, wala kang ibang iniisip. Yun po yung akin. Interesting. Kasi alam natin, lalo-lalo na to si Jaja and Dindin, you're very, very popular among the fans. Uh, Jaja, alam ko na uh, ikaw ang isa sa mga paborito. Uh, did you feel na mas mahirap o mas madali yung paglalaro na walang nanonood sa loob ng venue? I think it's, it's the same. Kasi kahit, well, nakakamiss talaga na may nagsicheer para sa'yo and nagsicheer para sa team mo. May nagbubus ng moral mo. I mean, may kung baga naririnig mo sila and then alam mo na talagang may inspire ka kasi nagpaparahirap sila pumunta ng venue to support you and your team. But then, um, walang walang crowd then is also okay. Kasi um, for me, playing with the cameras then So alam ko behind that cameras, uh, there is a lot of fans, there's a lot of people who supporting you and cheering for you na minsan kahit hindi mo na alam na nanonood pa ba sila or I mean, may mga nagme-message sa'yo sa social media, hindi mo sila napapansin. Um, Nakaka-overwhelm mm. kasi kahit ganun, oh. um, nakikita mo pa rin yung suporta nila na um, kahit yun, hindi sila nakakapanood sa venue mismo, ganyan, they're still cheering. They're still giving love and support to all player, all the players. And then, I think um, nakaka um, na, masaya pa rin maglaro kasi yun nga isipin mo rin yung family mo na nanonood behind that camera yung sacrifices nyo do walang crowd talaga wala eh pandemic parang naisip natin it's more okay na maging safe lahat than naman na magkaroon ng somehow parang yun nga uh, covid ganun Another X-factor, of course, na pinag-uusapan dito is management's role. 
uh, alam ko na napakalakas ng suporta ng inyong management uh, from the team owners, your manager, your coaches. Uh, Shaya, anong masasabi mo sa suporta ang ibinigay sa inyo ng, ng uh, management ng uh, charity ko sa pangunguna, of course, ni Mr. Romel Sitin? <laughs> Sobrang thankful kami sa kanila. Grabe po, sir. Sobrang hands-on nila sa lahat ng bagay, sa lahat ng mga needs ng team. Lalo na po kay Ma'am Sandra si team. Sobra pong hands-on siya as our team manager. Manager kung tawagin. Wala. Sobrang po. Kahit wala po sila dun uh, personally, mararamdaman po talaga namin sila you know, now that you've won, ito na, next level na, nanalo na kayo, I, I want to ask you siguro, Jassy, ito muna, mas, mas may pressure ba ngayon to sustain itong pagiging gold medalist, pagiging champion? I'm sure in the next conference, marami na ang uh, maghahanda laban sa inyo. Is there more pressure to sustain this winning run? Para po sa akin, mas nakaka-pressure kasi kumbaga may napatunayan na kami Napat, na, napakita na namin yung mga kaya namin gawin. Um, mas mahirap yung i-maintain mo yung nasa taas ka. Yun po yung nakaka-pressure para sa akin. Jaja, you wanted to add something? Um, sa akin po, yes. Kasi uh, yun nga, like sabi nga po ni Jasmine, mahirap talaga i-sustain or i-maintain kung ano yung um, meron yung team and hindi mo alam um, ano pa yung magiging problem nyo along the way going dun sa next na journey nyo. So, I think merong pressure kasi yun nga, marami ring mga taong naglulook forward ulit sa inyo sa next level or next performance na gagawin ng team nyo. Uh, well, of course, uh, with that kind of pressure, there's more work, more responsibility. Yan po mga kaibigan ng uh, panayam natin with the Charity Go Crossover, si Dindin uh, Santiago Manaba, Jaja Santiago, uh, Jasmine Nabor, at si Shaya Adorador. May mga sinabi pa sila tungkol sa kanilang uh, future, lalong lalo na yung paglalaro po sa ABC Club Championship na... Again, sorry po doon sa ating pagkakaputol na yun. Again, uh, I'd like to thank the Cherry Tigo crossovers, uh, lalo-lalo na kanilang uh, team owner, si Romel Sitin, uh, si Ma'am Sandra, and of course si uh, Judy Garcia, kanilang marketing head, uh, para po sa pa panayam na yan. At this point, gusto ko lang basahin ha, yung mga nagpadala po ng ating, sa ating pulso ng, uh, pulso ng bayan ngayong araw pong ito. Ang ating tinanong, mananakout ba ni Pacman si Ugas bukas? Ha? At kung anong round? Sabi ni uh, Prince Thoy, round 3 daw. Round 3, tulog. Sabi ni James, uy, uy, James, kamusta ka na? Manny will win by unanimous decision. Ugas is a tough fighter since he is from Cuba, which is a world power in amateur boxing. Alam natin, bronze medalist yan si Ugas. Ha? Mula kay Francisco Antonio Ramirez Garcia. Ba, ano to? Meksikano ba to? Sa tingin ko, hindi uh, nakayang inakout ni Pacman si Ugas dahil may edad na si Manny Pacquiao. Mula naman kay Ronald Tumbaga, Pacquiao will win via split decision. Aba, malapit ha. Eh? Si Jonathan Rivera, sabi niya sa pananaw ko uh, naman, Manny will win by knockdown. Siguro knockout na ibig sabihin niya, no? Uh, Arnold Grimares, walang TKO for Senator Manny but a 12-round split decision for tomorrow's fight. Sa Twitter, sabi rin ni uh, Mark, mala malalamog pero di mapapatulog ni Pacman. At muna kay uh, isa pang Mark, Mark Suba naman to, six round pa. Meron pa mga nagpadala sa ating Facebook, uh, ang dami pa puno pero naubusan na tayo ng oras. Uh, gusto natin magpasalamat ulit sa lahat po ng ating mga naging panauhin and of course sa lahat po sa inyo na sumubaybay sa atin ngayong araw pong ito. Sama-sama tayo ulit next week. So ang aming pong paalala lagi, bawal ang masugit tuwing Sabado. And of course sa lahat po ng ating gawain at mayorem, 
Day Glory. I'm all for the greater glory of God. Happy Sports Weekend, mga kapatid! More power, more play. Your passions, your stories, your life. Simply find me just one app. This is the future. The Giga Life in just one app. Experience more Giga moments when you make the smart choice. With the Philippines' fastest mobile data network. How do I know it's T1? Simply, smart, Apple.